Thank you very much, Kennedy, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Can I just say before we begin, what a great privilege it is to be here, and uh, the work that we do um, relies on uh, the efforts of people from right across the planet linking together, and everything about the Greens is this sense of connectedness. And to be here with people from right across the planet, with leaders um, from uh, the countries that you all represent, for me, is just a great source of inspiration. And I'm, um, I'm really thrilled to be here. I, it, it really is just a great tonic to know that we are a team. We're part of this global movement, that um, there are strength in numbers, and that the work that we're all doing together is the only way that we're going to be able to combat which, what, what is, um, as Kennedy described, the great challenge of, of this century and possibly the greatest challenge that we've ever faced as a species. And so I want to say thank you to all of you for all the work that you do and thank you to all of you for, for being here and being part of it. Um, it's both with the sense of pride and some disappointment that I want to talk to you about uh, the situation in Australia um, with great pride because uh, the Greens have been at the forefront of the climate change debate in Australia. We've effectively uh, led that um, and of course I want to acknowledge Senator Milne who uh, after the election of uh, 10 Greens uh, and uh, Adam Mann in the lower house we managed to find ourselves in the balance of power of both Houses of Parliament and um, Christine effectively took control of the climate change negotiations. We formed a multi-party committee and we established some of the most ambitious, uh, ambitious and, and I think effective climate laws anywhere in the world. So we had a price on carbon and, and not a trivial price, it was a fixed price moving to an emissions trading scheme over a few years. We had a massive investment in renewable energy because we recognised that the price alone wasn't enough to drive the transformation that was necessary. So we had a $10 billion climate fund established um, called the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. We had a, a range of other complementary measures alongside those. And uh, for three years, we had Australia leading the world on climate change with um, what were, as I said, um, some of the best laws anywhere in the world and they were laws that we as Greens uh, developed and saw through the parliament. And um, it is one of the great tragedies that after the election of the Conservative Abbott government that we saw the repeal of the carbon price. Not all of it's gone, let me tell you, but some of the architecture remains. We've still got the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and some of the uh, architecture that was built, but no question that they've um, dismantled a lot of what we had implemented. And they did it for a few reasons. They uh, were able to do it firstly because the government at the time was incredibly divided and um, it was very difficult for them to be able to, um, you know, sustain a, a, a debate on, on climate when they couldn't even agree with themselves and it became a bit of a soap opera, the, the, the Labor government. Uh, that was elected in 2010. Um, the opposition was very successful in turning climate change into a cost of living issue. It all became about putting power prices up. And uh, we didn't have uh, in the Labor Party an effective opposition to that. They brought straight into that frame when what we should have been talking about, certainly what the Greens were talking about, is the impact of climate change. What is, what is it that we're actually doing this for? It's very easy to get drawn into a debate about, technical debate about what, what a carbon price will do, what it does to um, uh, people's energy bills and so on, but it's really important to bring it back to what this is about. This is about, um, we saw some of the countries most affected. The Philippines are living this right now through extreme weather events. In our own country, in Victoria, we had some of the worst bushfires on record in 2009. What people, um, probably don't appreciate is that preceding those fires we had a couple of weeks of extreme heat and we had the chief health officer in my state of Victoria uh, make a, um, a lodge a report that said 
Well, we understand that the bushfires that were responsible for almost 200 deaths were a great tragedy, but let's not forget that in the weeks before that we had a heat wave that was responsible for more deaths than were caused through the uh, Black Saturday bushfires. So we're living this in Australia right now, and we need to remind people that the impacts of climate change are felt now, that they're acute. One of the challenges for me as uh, somebody who has a background in health is to help people understand that this isn't just some distant environmental challenge. This is a challenge right now in terms of its effect on extreme weather and people's health. We've seen the spread of a whole lot of um, viral diseases that are uh, moving further south because of the distribution of some of the insects that spread those diseases, mosquitoes and so on. Um, we're seeing an increase in the rate of things like gastroenteritis. People um, who uh, are suffering right now because bugs like warm weather. So making sure that people can identify with this threat, not just as some distant threat, but something that's affecting them right now is absolutely critical. What are we doing about it? Well, again, um, we are at the forefront of the debate in Australia. Our policy is to reintroduce a uh, price on carbon. That We think that's critical. But we're not going to get bogged down in that debate alone. There are a whole range of other things that need to happen. We saw this government wind down. We had a renewable energy target. Again, a very ambitious target. It was responsible for the development of a whole lot of um, uh, renewable energy projects. First among them was wind. We saw a huge expansion in the um, area of wind energy. And that was creating jobs for people. We were seeing jobs, for example, again, in my home state of Victoria, we were seeing young people, generational unemployment, people who were stacking shelves at supermarkets who were now working in high-tech jobs inside plants that build wind turbines in Australia, in regional centres that were, where youth unemployment was through the roof. We finally had some prospect of people getting highly skilled jobs in those areas. So we have to turn this um, into something that's not just about catastrophe, although that's important, people need to understand the impact of this, but also about opportunity, that there are huge opportunities in the future that we, we want to see created that's built on renewable energy and decarbonising uh, our economy. And so we'll continue to lead that debate. I think we're well placed to do it. People understand, at least in Australia, that we have uh, a good track record on this, that we have the skills and expertise on it, and in an environment where we've got the two big parties in our country who are very um, reluctant to take on some of the vested interests that are standing in the way of climate change action, that, that it is in fact the Greens who are leading the charge.